all my life I've grown up beside the sea, yet it was kind of alien to us. The whole community is a farm community. There's a few fishermen, there's a few people who mess around in boats, but it's something we are not really involved in. If you're denied something, you want even more. Uh, here in Cork, if it's a nice quiet day, I had to come down here, I have to look at what boats are in. When I was growing up, there was twin boys, they lived across the way from us, and they walked in the docks, uh -huh. right? That's all we knew, they walked in the docks. And they'd bring home, um, what we thought it was, it was like chocolate crumb, but it was actually the core of the, um, you know, the base of chocolate. And they used to say that it came from the barnacles, you know, came from underneath the ship. So I had this vision of this to chip it off, you know. But that'll tell you, that was like, that was the 60s. A lot of people walked in the docks, or they walked in Dunlops, or they walked in Fords. So they all, they were all interconnected. Our geography teacher in primary school telling us that Cork Harbour was the finest natural harbour in the world. We were the last point of call for the ships heading for the newly founded colonies out in, in America. Like we had very rich pasture lands here in Munster with plenty of, of cattle, beef and butter were exported out to the colonies. We had one of the biggest butter export industries centred up in Chandon at the Farkham Crane. It, it was on a par with Marseille at one stage here on a world scale. And even there recently, you know, I was in the custom house building and you could see the opulence and the splendour inside in that building. And it attests to how important shipping was. savoured visually. Most people don't tend to see it as, as beautiful. Most people wouldn't really discuss how yeah. breathtaking or beautiful the docks are. Like The road when you're coming in uh, from the train station is my favourite view in the whole city when you're just looking out across the docks and because it is so dramatic and it is that much more dramatic than any other part of, of Cork. Some of the industry can look ugly. Some of the things aren't appealing. But I don't look at the infrastructure when I'm walking down. I want to see the boats. Like a surprise, if every weekend there's, there's possibly a tall ship there, possibly uh, some cruise liner coming in, something like that. It brings a bit of peace, just walking by. In some ways, it's kind of like a music. As a younger person, when I was 22, I decided to head for London to work. I headed off from the Innisfail and I can remember standing on the deck and the ship's funnel was making sounds and the engine was revving up. But it was the start of a great adventure, like there was great, there, there was a sense of exhilaration too, but it was lonely heading off and it made me mindful of what so many people had, had, had gone through leaving from, from Cork Tag. And it's an experience going down the harbour and the ship like passed back Red Castle and over into the Irish Sea. Vincent Ball approached me on the boat because I looked so young, I suppose, and they used to go down to the boat, you know, in case anyone hadn't a place to stay in London, concerned for Cork people heading off.
just had a visual thing even when I was growing up like down the docks don't go down that area you know it's a very dodgy area kind of a very underground sexual connotations and stuff like that you know so that's a very um, old part of Cork as well you know don't go down the docks oh she was down in the docks you know you know, or you'd have a slag, or look, if I want to earn a couple of bob, no, I'd go down the docks. But I would imagine, I'm not quite sure now, you'd have to do a bit of research, but I'd say women actually physically went down the docks. And men, but more so women, physically went down the docks. You know, maybe a bit like street walking and stuff like that. But that's completely gone now. Now they call it the dock land. You know, so it seems more, more beautiful now. Cove, it was getting amazing ships like the Titanic and all that trip. I have a friend there, but he, he gives out about it. What happens in Cove every summer is the cruise ships come in and there's lots of Americans. He's not a fan of them uh, because, number one, they can't pronounce the name, they call it Cove H. And they, they're asking him a lot of questions and he just wants to be left alone. Mm -hmm. 